Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, Monday through Friday with your cool wrestling show that you love to watch. We have backstage news in ring, outside of the ring action. So, you know, um, you know, this show ranges. We necessarily don't um, always talk about uh, like results and also previews. I also dig into like some stories and stuff like that. Maybe some, you know, maybe some fan conspiracy theories that I would love to like, you know, kind of see. We talk about a little bit of the historical aspect of it as well. But uh, yeah, uh, enough about me. Hope you, hopefully, you guys had a pretty good week. It is Friday, so hope you guys are, you know, kicking back. Just got done eating dinner. It is eight o'clock on the West Coast, and um, you know, I know. Right now, WWE SmackDown is airing. I have it taped. I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be totally awesome. So we're going to preview that uh, first. But uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today. We have um, WWE SmackDown preview, my Thursday Night Wrestling review, uh, Impact and Ring of Honor. We're going to talk about my third segment. We're going to talk about Cody Rhodes on a potential heel turn. What it would take exactly for him to, you know, kind of fit into that uh, kind of role. And would it be right or would it be wrong kind of thing, you know, for his career, for the audience and for the company. Uh, segment four, we're going to jump into the WWE tag team division. Looks like they're kind of heading toward a revolution. When I mean, what I mean by that is, um, uh, of course, you kind of had the reign with the Usos and, um, you know, the bloodline and all you know everything that came along with that but uh i feel like wwe kind of you know had that role because i feel like they didn't really necessarily trust the wwe tag team division uh quite yet to kind of you know just break up the two belts but obviously of course you also had you know they were building up the jimmy and, and jay turn and all that kind of stuff so i'm going to talk about that a little bit also my uh, fifth se uh, segment every friday i want to give you guys some wrestling news to kind of ponder over the weekend you know also if you find yourself at a bar you know it's good wrestling banter you can bring up and uh yeah you have your boy e here from the gsmc wrestling lawyer podcast to uh you know thank for that uh, so, guys, we get a number of questions from viewers like you that come in during the show. So, please remember to hit up the tips and donations link at the GSMC podcast.net. Shoot your questions. This puts your questions up on top of the list so I can see it, so I can read it, you know, on live, uh, you know, on live air. Uh, tell me what you like about the podcast. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me, um, you know, your projected storylines and projected, um, you know, your predictions, you know, that's the cool thing about, you know, professional wrestling is, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to ponder a little bit, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, share your questions. It really does help the show, guys. Don't forget to Superman punch that like and subscribe button. Also follow, follow, follow the show, follow the network, the GSMC Sports Network. Again, the link is at the GSMC podcast.net. So without further ado, let's jump on into our first segment. We have WWE Smackdown preview. Uh, so we are live tonight. Um, well, not, um, you know, obviously it already aired on the, um, on the East coast, but I'm super excited to, you know, to watch it. Um, so CM Punk is coming back home. You're going to see CM Punk, although he is a raw superstar, he's going, uh, you know, obviously whenever Chicago, Illinois is mentioned, you know, either on like a WWE live event or, you know, raw or SmackDown CM Punk always, you know, and you know, he, he's always there and you're going to have a lot of build up heading toward a money in the bank, which takes place uh, on July 6th in Toronto. So, um, yeah, honestly, now you're going to see kind of CM Punk's um, reaction toward, you know, Drew McIntyre recently quitting the WWE on Monday Night Raw. So. I think CM Punk is going to have a lot of things to say about Drew McIntyre. I'm not sure if he's going to go with the, you know, the, the let's trash him kind of approach or shed a little bit of flowers on his accomplishments and stuff like that. I, I feel like the, I feel like the, the segment can go either way, either way. I think it's going to be good. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of going to be crazy to find out who CM Punk uh, starts pursuing after he knows that like, you know, he can't touch Drew McIntyre anymore and it's finally over. You know, it's over, you know, according to, you know, Kayfabe. Uh, so, you know, obviously a lot of things. Um, we have the, you know, since the money in the bank is right around the corner, on tonight's episode of SmackDown, you're going to see Kevin Owens versus Grayson Waller versus Andrade to determine one of those spots. Um, out of the three, I would say the best person that I would like to see in there would probably be uh, Andrade, only because I feel like Kevin Owens still has this lingering problem with the bloodline. 
you saw, uh, you know, at the end of, um, you know, Clash of the Castle, you saw him uh, and Randy Orton coming out to uh, help Cody Rhodes against the Bloodline. The Bloodline, I feel like, maybe prematurely jumped into the Cody Rhodes picture a little sooner than I thought. But, you know, obviously it is what it is. I think it's going to be great. Grayson Waller right now, he's obviously he's the tag team champion. I don't really think he's ready. Not, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to diss the dude or throw shade at him, but I don't think he's ready yet to kind of represent, um, you know, like a singles title. He would be a pretty good money in the bank. Usually the person holding the money in the bank is, uh, you know, he's either uh, a pretty good heel but most of the time in WWE, you kind of see the money in the bank holder that, you know, kind of like that, you know, kind of like that, that cocky, you know, selfish, you know, kind of heel, you know what I mean? Uh, and honestly, Grayson Waller would be absolutely phenomenal in that aspect. Um, I would say Austin Theory would be pretty awesome, but obviously, you know, he blew his, uh, he blew his chance there. And uh, so Andrade looks like he fits the bill. Ever since he came back to WWE, he's kind of been in good graces. Uh, he's been getting good bookings, great matchups. Obviously, I, I think he's the WWE speed champion. So it's going to be interesting to see him, you know, uh, he's kind of a luchador, like he's a bigger dude, but he goes out there and he does all the stuff that, you know, Rey Mysterio can. And also, uh, you know, Dragon Lee, you know, and it's, I'm, so I'm excited to find out who's going to win out of that triple threat match. Um once again, I feel like they're kind of, you know, we're still kind of having a wedge here between A-Town Down Under. Obviously, you kind of saw, you know, um, Austin Theory being dragged in front of, a, you know, a diving spear from Gargano. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago. And then last week, Austin Theory didn't look really too happy with, uh, you know, what um, DIY had to say um, at the, you know, on the Grayson Waller effect. So, you know, you know anything could be, you know, derived from that. So we also we're also going to see um, another uh, Money to Bank qualifying match: Randy Orton, Tamatanga, and Carmelo Hayes. Um, obviously, Randy Orton did eliminate Tamatanga from the King of the Ring last month. He also eliminated uh, Carmelo Hayes. Um, thinking about where Randy's going to end up, um, and once again, this kind of you know depicts on: Are they going to do the rematch between Gunther and Randy Orton? You know, it's still kind of up in the air, but as of right now, the WWE hasn't really touched on it. So in my opinion, I feel like it'd be best to have Cody Rhodes fight Randy Orton, not so much be a part of the uh, the um, the Money in the Bank uh, match, you know, so to speak. But Randy Orton, um, you know, once again, he's still, he's with the, you know, he's fighting the bloodline with Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes. Uh, Tama Tonga, I feel like he's still not ready yet to be that money in the bank kind of like random factor. I feel like if, uh, you know, he wins the money in the bank, then he gives it the solo Sokoa. That's probably would be the best case scenario if he wins tonight. And, uh, you know, Carmelo Hayes, I, f I like Carmelo Hayes. I feel like he's like, like I mentioned before, he's that heel. He thinks his, you know, his shits don't stink. He's cocky. He's arrogant. He's going to hold the briefcase. He's, you know, he would bring a lot of attention as the, you know, as a new, you know, money in the bank. I think that was something I mentioned on the podcast before. I was like, you know what, this guy would be, um, this guy would be dynamite, uh, you know, as that like just that heel, like you know what I mean? Uh, not not necessarily a heel. I feel like uh, there's a whole different types of heels. There's that heels that are like they're in your face, and there's also those undercover heels. So, Ro uh, Cody Rhodes was attacked by Solo Sokoa last week uh, at Clash of the Castle. So, um, uh, they're going to fight tonight. I guess that's the that's the per that's the plan. I, I guess they are uh, they're going to fight. Tonight it should be it should be interesting to you know kind of see how WWE kind of handles this. Like I mentioned before, I feel like WWE kind of prematurely, you know, invited Solo Sokoa to uh, you know kind of rain on Cody's parade way too soon. I know there's still uh, Talatunga and also um, WWE actually recently trademarked another Sokoa or whatever. I can't think of it right now. Ah, oh, God, I can't think. It's going to be bothering me. I'll Google it during the break. Um, and then you also have Jacob Fatu, who's still waiting in the wings. I don't know when he's going to debut. I think, I still think that Solo Sokoa still needs to, to you know, to uh, establish credibility for his stance as the, you know, as the head honcho, as the tribal chief in the new young bloodline. So that should be interesting to kind of find out what happens with that tonight. Uh, Logan Paul and LA Knight still building moment, momentum last week. You saw LA Knight, you know, taking a dip in Logan Paul's pool, which was actually kind of funny. I thought that was pretty, you know, that was so LA Knight, bro. That was so LA Knight, kind of crazy. And then, you know, another thing to kind of touch on, uh, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, 
are no longer WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, so it only we don't know how long it's going to take for them to finally get a singles push. I feel like um, uh, both superstars are kind of owed one. Um, I wanted to kind of see them hold the belts to like SummerSlam. Maybe they lose. Maybe they blame each other. Maybe one of them goes heel. My my uh, my pick would probably be Bianca. Um, although Jade would be a pretty badass heel as well. So, you know, right now it's still up in the air. Now these two women are no longer tag team champions. Do they try to get the tag team championship belts back? Maybe. But as of right now, you kind of have, you know, after Bailey defeated Piper Niven, you're going to have, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, kind of a spoiler alert here. I feel like Nia Jax is also owed one. So I feel like she's going to win at WWE SummerSlam as well and dethrone Bailey, the WWE Women's Champion. And she's going to need a line of suitors to fight her. Like, obviously, there is, you know, Bianca, but, the, you know, someone like, um, you know, someone like, for example, what is it? My pot, my Piper, but the other girl, the other girl. Who's the other girl? Why am I brain farting today? Uh, her name's not Michelle. Uh, Maxine, not Maxine Dupree. Never mind. I'm, you know, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. So it should be interesting to kind of find out uh, what they do with Bianca. Also, what they do with, uh, you know, Jade on this episode of SmackDown. Is it going to hint for them kind of being more of a tag team still? Or is it going to hint for them eventually, like, you know, clashing at each other, which would be absolutely badass. All right. So our next segment, we're going to dive into our Thursday night wrestling review. We jump into the ring of Ring of Honor. Also, um, you know, TNA Impact. So, hey. Uh, grab your favorite snack, grab your favorite beverage, and meet me back here in 10. <laughs> 